Oh, uh, I just realized I was on mute. Walikum salam. Yeah. So, first of all, walikum salam to all those who said salam. Achha, so, I was answering your question where you said that lately there is zero motivation to study uh, any fix. So, I said, ke, think of the, of the end result. Think of how good you're going to feel once you get that A star, inshallah. Okay, and then work backwards. Then think what it is that needs to be done for you to get that A star. Okay, use that as motivation. Think of all the opportunities you're going to get once you get a good result. Uh, all the doors that it's going to open for you. I'm good, alhamdulillah. I'm good. <laughs> How to avoid silly mistakes? Simple, just check as you go along. See, we all have a tendency of making silly mistakes, okay? So if you've realized that we have a tendency of making silly mistakes, that's great, okay? That means step one is done, okay? Step two is doing something about it. And then doing something about it is basically just check it, just keep checking as you go along. Sir, recheck ya hi nahi jata paper. Beta, I'm not saying it, do it towards the end, just keep on checking as you go along. So please do integration of partial fractions, hence type of questions. Yeah, we'll try and do that. We have two more days. So we'll try and stream something else. Uh, well, one of one of the things that I'll stream will probably be integration, something to do with integration. So you have to you have to be extra careful, Hassan uh, Haq. You have to be extra careful. Ke step by step, you have to check it and be vigilant, okay? Be vigilant. Now, A-level maths is, is, yes, in some cases it's tougher, in some cases it's easy. Okay. Integration ka question, Bajay, solve kar dein. Um, till after the stream, hopefully. Take care. So now let's start. Uh, I'd appreciate if you guys could just like the stream. Would mean a lot. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, next year onwards, I'll start putting content of A-levels also. Take Binomial expansion, if it comes in paper 1, mein, then paper 2, mein uske aane ke chances come. Hai. I've made a video where I've explained all the important topics for paper 2. Hai. Make sure to watch that. Trigonometric identities, okay. So, so if we have two more days, we'll try and stream something. We'll try and stream trigno either trigonometric identities or integration. Let's see. I've already done a stream, I'll not stream that stream. Since I've done a stream on logs, I'll not stream that stream. Hamza. Welcome, Slam. Sir, if someone is getting around 68, 17, P1, is it still possible? Yeah, it is possible. It is possible. Sir, can we do two streams a day for the remaining two days? Uh, that'll be difficult since I have my own classes also. I've done some topics for stream, you're right. So anyway, uh, let's start now. Let's not waste any more time. Welcome, Stam. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Achha, if you guys remember, I did a stream on functions earlier. 
ठीक है सो आई विल नॉट बी डूइंग द क्वेश्चन दैट आई ऑलरेडी डन द क्वेश्चन दैट यू कैन सी और सॉल्व और दंस दैट वी डेड इन द प्रीवियस स्ट्रीम ओके सो आई विल नॉट बी सॉल्विंग दोज क्वेश्चन ठीक है what i will be doing is ke since most of you have requested for graphs of ln and e to the power x which by the way are very easy okay so it's not going to take us probably going to take us like 5 7 minutes to cover that theek okay? hai so um we'll cover that first and then we'll solve questions of functions theek okay? hai will you have a session for october november i doubt that i doubt that i will i will make content for october november but a formal session i doubt that okay acha so let's get into it let's get straight to it so basically we're doing graphs okay kaun se graphs we're doing graphs of ln and e to the power x theek hai ab dekho we'll start with we will start with f of x is equals to e to the power x okay now the thing about e to the power x is that it's an exponential function theek hai so if we talk about its domain So there's really not a value that you cannot plug in in place of x, or you cannot have in place of x. You can have pretty much any value that you want in place of x, and you will get an answer. Okay, you can have any value in place of x, and you will get an answer. So which is why we say when we're writing the domain, we say that x is an element of all real numbers. Okay, that means you can have all real values, all real values in place of x. ठीक है वट वैल्यू दैट यू कैन थिंक ऑफ नेगेटिव जीरो पॉजिटिव यू कैन प्लग इट इन प्लेस ऑफ एक्स एंड यू कैन गेट एन आंसर ठीक है अच्छा अब एक काम करते हैं जस्ट टू सॉर्ट ऑफ गेट एन आइडिया ओके लेट्स जस्ट प्लग इन वैल्यूज एंड सी वॉट द एंड रिजल्ट लुक्स लाइक एंड एंड सी सी वट वी गेट ओके नाउ वैसे तो यू जस्ट हैव टू मेमोराइज द शेप ऑफ द कर्व ओके ऑफ द क्राफ यू डोंट रियली हैव टू डू दिस डू वट वो डू वट आई एम डूइंग राइट नाउ ठीक है यू जस्ट हैव टू कीप द शेप इन माइंड and then just tweak it accordingly slightly theek okay. hai okay so let's say i plug in 0 in place of x theek okay. hai so what do i get as f of x so e to the power 0 is 1 we all know that let's say i plug in 1 theek okay. hai so let's do this in our calculator e to the power 1 so we get something like let's say 2.718 so let's call it 2.72 theek okay. hai Let's plug in e to the power two, so you can see that we get something like seven point three eight. So yeah, let's plug in e to the power three, so we get twenty point zero eight. Okay, so you can see that the values are increasing exponentially. Okay, what do we say? We say that the values are increasing exponentially. See, okay, which is why we call it an exponential curve. Okay, now let's plug in minus one, see what happens. So if I plug in minus one. What happens is I get zero point three six seven, okay, something like that. What's an unreal value? Okay, unreal values are values like, for example, if you work out square root of minus four, okay. You, although you get a math error, but that's because it's an imaginary value. Uh, what are imaginary values? Well, you're gonna study those deeper in uh, detail in A two, okay. And if you plug in minus three, you can see that you get zero point zero four nine. 0.049. Okay, so what we what we're doing over here is yes, 2i. What we're doing over here is we're trying to sort of imagine uh, what the shape of the curve is going to be. Okay, we're trying to sort of understand, or you can say we're trying to sort of see what the trend here is going to be. Okay, so you can see that the trend is okay. Now, now I want you guys to describe the trend in words for me. Okay, as x increases, okay, what happens to the y value? Okay, as x increases. What is the rate of increase? Is the rate of increase like too much, or is the rate of increase like very negligible? What do you say about that? As x increases, yeah, it's too much. Okay. But what happens as you keep on going towards the left? For example, as x keeps on decreasing, okay, then you can see that your values are coming closer and closer to zero. Okay, now I want you, I want you to um, plug in uh, an extremely negative value as a power of e. Let's say, let's say I plug in minus five. Okay, even if you do that, you'll notice that you are still getting a value that's positive, although it's very close to zero, but it's still positive. Okay, so that means as you go 
towards the positive x-axis okay zero is one right so that's a good starting point that when x is zero y is one okay so as you go towards the positive x-axis you can see that y is increasing exponentially okay but as you go towards the left hand side of the x-axis as yeah as you go towards the left hand side of the x-axis you can see that the values are coming closer and closer to zero okay just like when you have tan 90 what happens our graph approaches 90 but it's never equal to 90 okay so just like that as you keep on going towards the left hand side you'll notice that your graph is coming closer and closer to the horizontal x-axis okay but it's never ever touching the x-axis which is why which is why even if you try and work out e to the power x equals to zero okay so this is just something on the side over here that if you try and work out e to the power x equals to zero okay you will notice that it's not possible okay this this is not possible okay try and work it out use ln on both sides try and work it out you'll notice that it's not possible yes exactly x becomes the asymptote okay so this is basically for e to the power of x sir mere calculator me to okay so the reason why it's zero okay the reason why it's zero is because your calculator is now incapable of calculating such a small value. So now it is saying, okay, okay you know, it's equal to zero. It's very close to zero. Okay. So let me show you. Chalo, okay. Good thing you guys pointed that out. Let me show you. Okay. Let me show you what's exactly happening over here. Okay. So thankfully I have a graph over here. Okay. So you can see that I have, you can see that I have a graph of e to the power x. Okay. Over here. Now I'm going to zoom out a little. Okay. And we're going to go on the left hand side okay now if i zoom in it may seem as if it's on it's it's aligned with the x-axis okay or it's on the x-axis but if i zoom in okay now you'll have to zoom in quite a lot okay so you know i'm still zooming in still zooming in Achha. okay and let's say i move slightly on the left so take the run out look Let's zoom out a little, just a second. Yeah, okay. Let's zoom in over here. Okay. Now, what I want you guys to observe over here is that our graph is not exactly equal to zero. Okay. It's still very, uh, isko hum hai, um, slightly, okay. It's very slightly above zero, but it's not exactly equal to zero, okay? Which is why, which is why when your calculator is saying zero, that is not because it's actually equal to zero, okay? Your calculator is not telling you zero because it's equal to zero. The reason why your calculator is saying zero is because it is now incapable of working it out, okay? So you can see that I'm zooming in, I'm still zooming in. Okay, now you, here you can probably see the difference, okay? You can see that it's still above the x-axis, okay? Although very minutely, if you want to call it, okay, but it's still above the x-axis, okay, and this is what happens as you keep on going towards the left, okay, okay, now, the thing is, for you, what's important is to just know the shape of the curve, okay, what's important for you is to just know the shape of the curve, okay, now, the next thing is, the next graph that we're going to draw is basically ln x, okay, Okay, just a second. I'm going to exit the app and open it up again. Take care because there seems to be, it seems to have stalled or something. Okay, so the next graph that we are going to draw, me crashed. Okay. The next graph that we're going to draw is basically ln x. So, yeah. Achha, now there's something we know about log functions. What do you do? What do you make sure of in order to make sure that a long uh, that a that a log function is defined? So let's say you have f of x. Okay. Let's say you have just a second. Okay. So a question for you guys: What do you do to a log function to make sure it's defined? No negative value, okay, I want you to be a bit more specific, okay? I want a bit more specific answer. No one, 
Okay. Again, what you guys are saying isn't wrong. TK, what you guys are saying isn't wrong, but I want you to be a bit more specific. Okay. X is greater than... Yeah, the argument must be positive. Okay, the argument must be positive. Okay, now tell me what happens if, let's say... Okay, the argument must be positive, I agree. But what happens if the argument is 1? Okay, tell me what happens if the argument is 1. Okay, sorry about that. Yes, if the argument is 1, it becomes 0. Okay. Let's again, let's plug in some values and see what the trend over here is. Okay, let's plug in values and see what the trend over here is. And then we'll sort of write down in words that how the two graphs are related. Okay, you guys might know that already. You guys might know already how they're related. But let's plug in some values and see what the deal is. Okay. Achha, one, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing that I forgot to point out earlier. We, okay, what is the range of this graph? What, what is the range of this? What's the range over here, boys and girls? Yes, the range over here is that f of x is greater than 0. Remember, it's not even greater than or equal to 0, it's greater than 0. Because like I said earlier, that our graph is never actually equal to 0, it's always greater than 0. So make sure that you take care of that. Okay. Now, by the way, did you guys see today I made a post on, uh, I mean, I posted something on Instagram re related to e to the power x and ln x. Did you guys see that? Okay, so let's plug in zero. All right, so when you plug in zero, what do you get? You get an error. Okay, so if you plug in ln zero, you get an error. Take a math error out of there. If you plug in one, you get zero. If you plug in two, what happens? Let's see. So ln two is basically 0 0.693. Okay, let's plug in ln three. So ln three is 1.09. Okay. Now, what we'll have to do is, ideally, we're going to have to drag our values. We're going to have to shift these values backwards, okay? So, let's do one thing. Let's take this zero, bring it over here. Let's take these values, bring them over here. Okay, now... Uh, at 2, let's see what we have. At ln2, we have 0 0.693. Let's see what happens when we have ln4. Okay, now I want you guys to tell me what the rate of increase of x is. Okay. Uh, sorry, what, what, what do you think about the rate of increase of y? Is it like too much or it's increasing but it's not increasing at a very high rate? It's increasing at a very slow rate. What do you think about that? Yeah, I streamed functions uh, earlier also, okay? Which is why I'm not gonna be discussing what I did in that. Okay, yeah. so it is increasing, okay? But it's, in, it's increasing at a very slow rate, okay? Which is why, which is why, which is why. Achha, by the way, before, before, I, um, before I make the graph, okay? Let's have a look at the domain, okay? What can we draw a conclusion about the domain? Well, domain ha x has to be greater than zero, okay? X has to be greater than zero. And let's plot and see what we can say about the range also, okay? Achha, now, you might have noticed that there are some values that I've skipped, okay? What are those values? What are those values? Now, I've started from one, okay? Now, you might for a second think that it's never negative, but that, that's actually not true. It is negative, but when do you think it's going to be negative? Okay, no. If you plug in ln minus 2, what the error will come okay? Yes, Daniel, yes, they are. Okay, I was gonna come to that later. Okay. So basically, if you plug in values, okay, so here's the thing. At 1, it's equal to 0. Okay, we can see that. So that means from 1 onwards, this is what it looks like. Okay. 
this is how it goes actually not that steep but something like this okay so if you plug in zero point something okay if you plug in zero point something all right you'll notice that your answer your values are negative so that means in between zero and one in between zero and one this is what a graph looks like okay at 0 0.1 0 0.2 you know this is what it looks like okay okay now something we what we do is let's try and summarize everything that we have done okay let's try and summarize everything we have done like in a pehle, let's write down the range okay what, what do you say about the range of this what can we say about the range of this okay f of x is No, it's not. That's the domain. That's the domain. Okay, x is greater than zero is the domain. Okay. No, it's not always great. All real values. Yes, f of x basically belongs to the set of all real values. Okay. So that's what we have. All real values. Okay. Yeah. So basically, goes from positive infinity to negative infinity. Infinity. Okay. So it's not just greater than one. Okay. It goes to positive infinity and it goes to negative infinity also. Acha, abe kam karte hain. Let's summarize everything that we have done, okay? So basically, sabse pehle to it's important for us to understand, it's important for us to understand how f of x and ln x are related, okay? So for that, there's something you need to note, okay? And that is ln x and e to the power x are basically inverse of one another, okay? So remember that n and x and e to the power x are basically inverse of one another, okay? Which is why if you look at both their graphs at once, you know, this is what we realize. If you look at both their graphs at once, this is what we realize, okay? So if I look at e to the power x, okay, which I'm gonna make in the color, I mean, I'm gonna make the, using the color red. So this is what e to the power x looks like, okay? This is e to the power of x. And if you look at L and x, which I'm gonna make using the color green, okay? So this is what that looks like. And we come to the conclusion that these two graphs are basically inverse of one another along the line y is equals to x. Okay, so we come to the conclusion that these two graphs are basically inverse of one another along the line, I mean reflection of one another along the line y equals to x. Yes, this is actual magic, okay? So, well, my drawing isn't the best, so to show you what it, they look like, I'm gonna be using this, okay? So let's quickly make L and X over here. Okay, so we have L and X, let's close the bracket. Let's quickly make E to the power of X. So e to the power of x, okay. Now you can see that these two graphs, okay, if I zoom out a little, you can see that these two graphs, graphs are basically reflection of one another, okay, along the line y is equals to x. Okay, now let's understand their domain and range also, okay. Let's understand their domain and range also, okay. So here we have l and x, okay. So I'll basically be drawing what I posted on my Instagram earlier. Okay, so nothing new for you guys over here, but still pay close attention. Okay, so here's the function. Okay, here's the domain. And here is the range, okay? So let me just turn this all into black. Okay, I'm gonna try and color code this as much as I can, okay? So if we talk about e to the power x, what was the domain of e to the power x? We can see that we can plug in whatever value that we want. So x is an element of all real numbers, okay? And this is, by the way, f of x, so yeah. And what about the range? The range is that f of x is basically greater than zero, okay? Now let's talk about ln x, which by the way is the inverse function, 
right, which is by the way the inverse function, okay. What do we say about its domain? We say that its domain has to be greater than zero. And what do we say about its range? We say that f inverse of x has to be, uh, is an element of all real numbers, okay. Now why is that? If you remember from prior knowledge, you should, that basically domain of, domain of f of x is equals to range of f inverse of x okay and we can see that's true the domain of f of x is basically equal to the range of f inverse of x okay and the range of f of x is basically equal to the domain of f inverse of x okay which we can see being true right over here okay Sir, isn't it greater than one? On zero, it gives an error. Okay, it does give an error on zero, you're right. Whoops, sorry about that. It does give an error on zero, to, on one, sorry. But what about all the values in between zero and one? What about all the values in between zero and one? You can still plug in those values, right? So this is basically a summary of everything that we've done earlier, okay? Now, if you want a neater version of this, you can head over to my Instagram and get it from there, okay? This is, well, this isn't too bad either, but you know, just saying. Okay, now let's do some actual questions and see how exactly are we gonna deal with this, okay? Now, I will always encourage you guys, especially when it comes to Ellen and all of that, to basically go the extra mile, okay? And I'll tell you what I mean by that, okay? So let's solve a few questions over here. Okay, let's solve this. So this is a question from October, November 2017, paper 12. Okay, we're gonna try and solve four or five questions over here. So it says functions f and g. So asymptote is basically a vertical line. Okay, it's an infinite vertical line, which the graph never touches. It approaches it, but it never touches. Okay, so if you remember the graph of tan, at 90, it's infinity. So that means at 90, we have like an, uh, some, we have something we call an asymptote, okay? Okay, so this is a fairly simple question. It says write down the range of f. Okay, so we can see that we have an, we have, uh, an ln function over here, okay? So what is the range going to be? Well, we know very well that the range of any uh, ln function is basically all real values. So f of x is an element of all real values, okay? So how would we remember ln and e graphs? But it's just do graphs that you have to remember the shape of. And even if you do forget, you can always just assume some values and see what the graph looks like, okay? Okay, write down the range of G. Okay, so this function is a quadratic function. So okay, what kind of function are we looking at? We're looking at a quadratic function, okay? Now with a quadratic function, it's, since it's not a one-to-one -one function, okay? It's not always a one-to-one -one function. Sometimes you, because of the domain, it becomes a one-to-one -one function. Sometimes it's a many-to-one function, okay? So with a quadratic function, it's always a good idea to go the ex extra mile, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean by that, okay? So if I have y is equals to 2x squared plus 3, ideally what I would want is, I would want to find out the turning point, okay? So since we're doing functions after we're, we're, we're done with differentiation, it becomes a whole lot easier. You can use differentiation and find out what the turning point is. So 4x is equals to zero, x is equals to zero. Let's find out the y coordinate of the turning point. So y coordinate of the turning point is three. Now it is just one mark, I know, but it's still important for us to go the extra mile just so that we're absolutely sure of our answer. So this function that we're looking at, g of x is equals to 2x squared plus 3, is basically a quadratic curve that is turning at 0, 0,3. So that means this is basically, so our curve, by the way, is going to be like this, okay? But since the domain is x is greater than 0, that means we're only allowed to look at this part of the curve. So if you're only looking at this part of the curve, can anyone tell me what the, yeah, I could have also used completing square, okay? Can anyone tell me what the range of this graph is going to be if I'm only allowed to look at the blue part of the curve? What would be the range? More than three, that's correct, okay? So we're gonna say that g of x is greater than three, okay? Not f of x, g of x, okay? Which is why, like I said, it's always a good idea, especially in the case of a quadratic curve, to go the extra mile, sketch it, see where the turning point is, see what the domain is, 
and then work it out okay Achha, it's going to be greater than three it's not going to be greater than or equal to three okay why because it's greater than zero it's not greater than or equal to zero so watch out for these little things okay this is just one mark even if you don't write even if you write greater than or equal to three you will you still won't get a mark okay Achha, pir it says find the exact value of f inverse of g of four okay f inverse of g of four so first thing i want to do is i want to find out g of four okay so how will I find out g of 4? Well, that's simple. Just plugging in 4 in place of x in function g. Okay. So 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 plus 3 is 35. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to find out f inverse. Okay. f inverse of x. How will I do that? Well, y is equals to ln x. Do we know what the inverse of ln x is? Do we know that? Yes, e to the power th okay. Achha. Let's say let's say you find it up. Let's say you've forgotten what ln x, what the inverse of ln x is. Okay. Let's say that has happened to you. So it's very simple to work it out. Okay. You set this equal to y. We know that the base of ln is e, right? So that means x is equals to e to the power of y, which means f inverse of x is equals to e to the power of x. Okay. So now we can put all of this together and work out f inverse of g of four which is going to be e to the power of 35. And since the question has asked us to find the exact value, okay, we'll just stop at e to the power of 35 without evaluating it. Okay, next. Next it says find g inverse of x and state its domain. Okay, so let's rewrite g of x. Okay, so g of x was basically 2x squared plus 3. So yeah, so we set this equal to y. y is equals to 2x squared plus 3. So yeah. So y minus 3 is equals to 2x square, which means that x square is equals to y minus 3 upon 2, okay, which means that x is equals to square root of y minus 3 upon 2, okay. Now we will have a plus minus sign over here, which we'll later on decide whether we're going to go with plus or minus, okay. Now we do the final step, which is g inverse of x is equal to plus minus square root of x minus 3 upon 2 okay now before we decide the plus and minus let's first write down its domain okay so what is it what is domain of g inverse of x going to be equal to what is it going to be equal to of g of x okay tell me domain of g inverse of x is going to be equal to what of g of x very good. It's going to be equal to range of g of x. That's correct. Okay. And what exactly is the range of g of x? Well, the range of g of x, we worked it out, was greater than 3. Is that what it was? Yeah, that's what it was, greater than 3. So that means our domain is x is greater than 3. Okay. Achha, that's sorted out. Okay. Now we need to decide whether we go with the plus sign or minus sign. What do we do? Are we going to go with the plus sign or are we going to go with the minus sign? What do you think? Yes, so we're going to go with the plus sign. Okay, no, we're going to go with the plus sign. I'll tell you why. The reason why we'll go with the plus sign is because you can see that over here it says x is greater than zero. Okay, greater than zero means what? Greater than zero means positive. And the only way we're going to have positive is when we have a plus sign outside. So that means our final answer is going to be g inverse of x is equals to positive. Now, we don't really need to write the positive sign. Okay, but I'm just trying to put some emphasis on it, which is why I've written it. x minus 3 upon 2. And we say that x is greater than 3. Okay. Okay, that's great. Okay. Now, let's do some more questions involving domain and range. Take a composite function is still fairly easy, but let's do some questions involving domain and range. Okay, let's do this question. This is an interesting question. Take a and this is from October, November, 2020. So yeah, paper 12. Okay. So it says f of x is equals to x squared plus two x minus three for x is greater than or equal to minus one. Okay. Now, you know what? Since this is a quadratic function, I'm not even going to bother what it says later on. 
I will immediately go the extra mile and find out, well, I can see it's a minimum curve, right? So I will immediately go the extra mile and find out the turning point, okay? Now you can do that through differentiation, you can do that through completing square. For that, there's no compulsion, but just do that before you do anything else, okay? So I would like to do this with the help of completing square. So x squared plus 2x minus 3. So that means I'm going to add the square of uh, 1 here and I'm going to add the square of 1 over here. Okay. So I'm looking at x plus 1, the whole thing square. Sorry, minus the square of 1. Okay. Minus 4. Okay. So now I know that this, whatever this curve is, okay, it's a minimum curve, of course. So it has turning point minus 1 and minus 4. Okay. So that means if I quickly make a sketch of it on the side, okay, if I quickly make a sketch of it on the side, they tell you minimum in the question. Okay, yeah, I guess you're, you're right, okay. <laughs> you're right, minus one and minus four, okay. So minus one and minus four, okay. So that means this is what the curve is basically like, okay. So let me just drag it towards the right a little so I can complete it. So that means this is what the curve looks like. Okay, now remember, I still haven't read the question. So yeah, I still haven't read the question. Now I'm going to read the question and see what's up. Okay, so the question says x is greater than or equal to minus 1. So that means we're only allowed to look at this part of the curve. Okay, now the question is saying, okay, given that the minimum value of x squared plus 2x minus 3 occurs when x is equal to minus 1. Explain why f of x has an inverse. Okay, so what statement are we going to write over here? X, which will explain that why this has an inverse. Yes, because it's a one-to-one -one function, yes. So, because f of x has an inverse because when x is greater than or equal to minus 1, f of x becomes a 1 to 1 function. So make sure that you state everything there is, okay? But also don't drag it unnecessarily, be specific and to the point. Okay. Sir, what should be, what would be the range? Well, you tell me, what do you think will be the range over here? You're right, the question has an asterisk for that, but later, Maybe it's going to ask us, okay, no, it's not going to ask us later on either, but what would be the range? It's a good, it's, it's a good thing to know. F of X, what do you think? What do you think? Not minus three, not minus three, greater than or equal to minus four, greater than or equal to minus four. Okay. Over here, we're going to say, greater than or equal to y because you can see over here that x is greater than or equal to minus one and it's a very dumb question but what is the difference between range and domain okay or oh, domain is because i read that question when i have it too late i'm going to delete the idea but i've read it now domain are basically your x values okay range are basically your y values okay range is your output domain is your input sir greater than or equal to minus one can't say but it's given in the question it's given in the question okay Anyway, okay, so part B says on the axis below sketch the graph of y is equals to f of x and the graph of y is equals to f inverse of x. Tika. Label each graph and state the intercepts. Sir, equals to hai, sir. When, when do I disagree with that? When do I disagree with that? Okay, uh, label each graph and state the intercepts on the coordinate axis. Okay, now bear in mind, whatever it is that we're going to do, we're going to keep in mind that x is greater than or equal to minus one. So what is a one-to-one -one function? How, how do we determine it's a one-to-one -one function? Okay, so if your function is constantly increasing, okay, it's a one-to-one -one function. If your function is increasing and decreasing, it's a many-to-one -one function. So one test for inverse is called a horizontal line test. Okay, this is something I covered in my last stream. I suggest you watch that, okay? and to sort of brush up your basics. Okay, so if the, I'll still give you a summary of it. If the horizontal line is touching or cutting the curve at just one point, that means it's a one-to-one -one function, which is why it will have an inverse. Okay, anyway, so let's draw f of x. So yeah, so for f of x, I'm gonna go with the color red. We know one point 
and that one point is minus one minus minus one minus two minus three minus four so that's right over here we know another point and that another point is the y-axis which is minus three and let's find out the x-intercept okay how do i find out the x-intercept so we set it equal to zero so x square plus two x minus three is equals to zero so x square plus three x minus x minus three is equals to zero let's take x common so we have x plus three let's take minus one common so we have x plus three again okay so x minus one x plus three is equals to zero x is equals to one or x is equals to minus three so we're not going to consider minus three because that is outside of our domain so this is what we have okay so now we have three points through which our curve is going to pass okay so this is what it's going to be like sir so much nahi k greater than minus one q lagaya Peter, it's given in the question. Read the question, Abdul Rafi. Likha hai x is greater than or equal to minus one. So, Peter, greater than or equal to minus one. You'll get it, right? Less than, a little bit. Do we need to show any other values other than the intercepts? Not only here, but in every question. No. You just need to show the intercepts. Okay. Abdul Rafi, Peter, सवाल पढ़ लेते हैं. It's a good idea to read the question. So yeah. Okay. Now, अब मुझ since we know that the inverse function is basically going to be a reflection along the line y equals to x so it's always a good idea to draw the line y is equals to x okay remember what i said i said it's always a good idea to draw the line y is equals to x okay uh, what criteria do examiners use to mark these graphs i don't want to waste too much time to make it precise okay you don't have to make it very precise but when you're taking values 1 2 3 4 make sure that they're equally spaced equally spaced on the x axis and equally spaced on the y axis okay they can be different but equally spaced for example if you're leaving 1 cm for one unit that's fine and for y axis if you are leaving 1 cm for two units then you stick to that okay acha aiza beta for that just watch my last stream of functions i've explained vertical line and horizontal line in that okay and i've also done some questions from this very worksheet theek hai so i'd suggest you watch that so aapka clear ho jayega theek hai okay so now that we have our regular function which is basically f of x now it's time to make the inverse okay Now what happens when you reflect a graph along the line y is equals to x? What happens? Yes, of course. In every function graph, we will consider the intercepts in the range of the domain. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, quickly, guys. Do we have to take one, two, three, four, or should we show the points where the graph crosses the x-axis? Just show the points where the graph crosses the x-axis. Take x and y-axis. and then since you guys should know what the shape of the quadratic curve is then you don't really have to take points okay yes so basically x would become y y would become x okay so let's do just that okay so here's a point that has coordinates minus 1 and minus 4 so that means after i reflect it after i reflect it it's going to become minus 1 minus 4 and minus 1 okay Now here's a point that has coordinate zero and minus three. Again, after we reflect it, it's going to become minus three and zero. Here's a point that has coordinates one comma zero. After we reflect it, it's going to become one and zero. Okay. So now we are going to make the inverse graph of the inverse. Take it. Excuse my drawing, please. It's not the best. Take it. Okay. Let me take off my watch. domain becomes range yep that's correct domain becomes the range and range becomes the domain that's absolutely spot on There you go. So now, of course, teacher, one should be the. Sure, Chana. Thank you for your suggestion. Anyway, so there you go. That's it. Now we have our graph, and it's inverse. Okay. Any questions? 
So e to the power x graph increases exponentially, whereas yes, Talha, you're right. Not bad. Okay. Achha, when you have made both the graphs, right? When you have made both the graphs, just sort of, you know, before you completely step away from it, okay, just see whether they actually look like they're a reflection of each other. And over here, they do look like they are a reflection of each other. Okay. So that means we've done it correctly. Okay. So if the domain is restricted, so it's necessary to draw the graph. No, no, no. Look, domain to f of x is restricted, right? Domain to f of x is restricted. Okay. Inverse is a little bit. Sir, you are a legend of additional mathematics. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's do another question. Let's do this question over here. What time is it? 8.33. Okay. Plenty of time. So this is a question about the graph of 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 we know how to keep a logarithmic function alive, right? What do we do? What do we make sure of? Yes, Mohamed Farooq, it's a good idea. Okay, but it's a good idea to study A-level math straight away, not add maths, just study A-level math straight away. Okay. So do we have to show the working while finding intercepts? Yeah, yeah, it's best to show the working while finding the x-intercepts. Okay. Yeah, we make sure... Uh, we make sure that the argument is greater than zero. Abdul Rafi, kya mushkil ho rahi hai So how do we do that? We say two x minus one zero. Just a second. I'm gonna have to exit the app and launch it again. Aaj pata nahi kya hota hai kar raha. Okay. Yeah. So we make sure of the fact that the argument is greater than zero. Okay. So we say two x minus one is greater than zero. Okay. Now can we solve for the value of x? Not solve for the value of x, but for the range of x. So x is greater than half. Okay. So for as long as x is greater than half, there's nothing to worry about. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Me wala bol diya aise hi. Acha aise hi bola apna. I thought you meant. Thought you were serious. Okay. अच्छा, find f inverse of x and its domain, okay? So f inverse of x and its domain, ठीक है? अच्छा, अब मुझे ये बताओ कि inverse के लिए हम क्या करेंगे? What are we gonna do? You're welcome, Abdullah. You're welcome. Sir, to find the domain or range, we always have to keep. देखो, देखो, ये, ये always वाला scene ना, ये always वाला scene आपको मेंशन लेट लेट डूबेगा, ठीक है? Add maths में ना कभी भी इस तरह के rules नहीं बनाया करो, okay? If this, then that. If that, then this. ठीक है? इतनी मेहनत हम इतनी नहीं करते कि हम एक rule बना लें कि ये है तो बस हमेशा ये करना है। आपको समझ के करना पड़ता है, ठीक है? Quadratic function की अलग treatment होती है exponential function की अलग treatment होती है, ln function की अलग treatment होती है, ठीक है? तो अगर मैं आपको जवाब ये always का हाँ या ना में दे दूँगा ना, तो फिर that's that's incorrect, ठीक है? लेकिन ये जरूर है, if you want to find the domain of a logarithmic function, you have to make sure that the argument is always greater than zero, ठीक है? So add math में you have to be specific, you can't make general rules like that, कि if this then that, if that then this, okay? So इतनी मेहनत हम इसलिए नहीं करते कि हम rules बना लें so yeah okay so yeah i can see that you guys have given the correct answer so basically what we'll do is we'll do 4 ln 2x minus 1 is equals to y sir aapko dekh ke aisa lag raha hai you're about to burst into no i'm not about to burst into laughter okay so basically let's let's take 4 over to the other side so ln is equal 2x minus 1 is equals to 4 upon y ठीक है, so 2x minus 1 is equals to e to the power of y upon 4. ठीक है, why? Because the base of ln is e. ठीक है, so 2x is equals to e to the power of y upon 4 plus 1. Okay, so x is equals to e to the power of y upon 4 plus 1 upon 2. Now you do the final step, the final formality. But I think you already asked me a question like a dozen times now. ठीक है, please no spamming, बेटा. F inverse of x is equal to e to the power x upon 4 plus 1 upon 2. There you go. That's your answer. Sir, is it important to show the working? What if we directly change it? 
आपका दो दिन में एग्जाम है अभी तक आप लोग ऐसे फजूल सवाल पूछ रहे हैं येस बेटा एवरी एवरी वर्क इफ इट्स अ थ्री मार्क क्वेश्चन द एग्जामिनर इज लुकिंग फॉर सम अमाउंट ऑफ वर्किंग ठीक है तो मेक श्योर नॉट टू स्किप एनी वर्किंग सर पेपर वन का क्वेश्चन सिंस आई डोंट नो एग्जैक्टली आपने उसको क्या आंसर किया आई रियली कॉन्ट से बट अगर आपने सारी वर्किंग सही की है एंड मे बी फाइनल आंसर सही नहीं दिया तो यू लूज वन मार्क ओके वन और मैक्सिमम टू मार्क्स ठीक है अच्छा ओके सो दैट्स दैट अच्छा वट अबाउट इट्स डोमेन वट अबाउट वट अबाउट इट्स डोमेन वट इज़ द डोमेन ऑफ दिस दिस फंक्शन गोइंड बी वट यू थिंक रेंज ऑफ एफ एफ एक्स ठीक है ओके सो वट यू थिंक अबाउट द रेंज ऑफ एफ एफ एक्स इट्स एन एल एन फंक्शन वट वी नो अबाउट रेंज ऑफ एफ एफ एक्स यस यस Yes, yes, yes. So its domain is basically going to be all real numbers. ठीक है सर वैक्टर्स के लिए एक वीडियो बेटा आई डॉन प्लेंटी ऑफ स्ट्रीम्स ऑन वैक्टर्स आई डोंट थिंक आई शुड बी मेकिंग एनी मोर कॉन्टेंट ऑन वैक्टर्स सही है इट्स बेस्ट दैट यू वॉच दोज एंड आई थिंक इट्स बेस्ट फॉर यू गाइज दैट आई मेक कॉन्टेंट ऑन टॉपिक्स दैट आई हैवेंट मेड एनी कॉन्टेंट ऑन ठीक है अच्छा सो दैट्स दैट नाउ लेट्स डू दिस क्वेश्चन सॉल्व जी ऑफ एच ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल्स टू सेवन ओके सो जी ऑफ एच ऑफ एक्स मीन्स दैट वी गन प्लग इन फंक्शन एच ओके इन प्लेस ऑफ जी ओके सो दैट मीन्स एक्स प्लस फाइव में एक्स की जगह विल हैव स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ टू एक्स माइनस थ्री प्लस फाइव ठीक है दिस इज वॉट जी ऑफ एक्स वॉज राइट इट वॉज एक्स प्लस फाइव ठीक है नाउ दिस इज इक्वल टू वॉट दिस इज इक्वल टू सेवन सो दैट मीन्स टू एक्स माइनस थ्री Inside the square root is equals to seven minus five, which is two. Okay. Now we square both sides. Okay. So this is a fairly simple question. Two x minus three is equals to four. Two x is equals to seven. X is equals to seven point two or three point five. So I think three easy marks for us. Okay. Acha, I will uh, upload this worksheet for you guys. It has answers in it also, so you guys can practice or do whatever it is that you want to do. Okay. So I'm going to do one more question so yeah and uske baad we will call it off or maybe two more questions theek hai let's do two more questions I'm thinking of a nice question to solve for you guys. Chalo ye karte hain. Let's do this. This is from May 2020 paper 2 variant 1. Theek hai? Sir, paper timing better karne ke liye kya kare? Better keep on practicing and when you're practicing at home make sure to time yourself also. So finding speed and velocity using vectors is not constant velocity, right? some older papers have questions not seen in recently okay so if you see questions such as you know uh, velocity in still air or velocity in still water theek hai those type of questions are no more in our syllabus theek hai so yeah those type of questions you'll probably see before 2020 theek hai okay so it says sketch the graph of y is equals to f of x and hence sketch the graph of y is equals to f inverse of x on the axis below okay now notice over here it says x is greater than or equal to 0 okay and yes it's ln 2x plus 1 but please remember that the shape of the curve will remain the same theek okay? hai the shape will not change however what will happen if i plug in 0 in place of x okay what will happen if i plug in 0 in place of x can anyone work it out mentally and tell me what the answer is no it's not going to be an error it's not going to be an error it's going to be zero yes if you plug in zero in place of x you'll get ln1 which is equals to zero okay and for all the other values it's going to keep on increasing okay so that means this is what it's going to be like theek okay? hai this is what it's going to be like so yeah acha ab we know from prior knowledge that when we're making the inverse inverse is nothing but a reflection along the line y is equals to x okay so this is the line y is equals to x remember y equals to x is basically a 45 degree line okay 
and now what do we have to do we have to draw the inverse of this ferry graph okay now we don't have much to we don't have a lot of values to work with okay so we'll have to keep in mind that the two graphs are going to be a reflection of one another okay so the point zero zero is not going to go anywhere okay so what i'm drawing in blue is basically the inverse okay and the point where the two lines intersect okay i mean the two graphs intersect the y equals to x and f of x that's going to be the same for the inverse i mean that will be the same for the inverse graph also so that means my inverse graph is going to be something like this there you go i know you don't even have to find out the inverse i mean you don't even have to find it out as a function okay you just have to keep in mind the basic concept that the graphs are basically a reflection of one another along the line y equals to x and that's it that's how you get the three marks one mark for y equals to x one mark for the regular function and one mark for the inverse function okay so this was a fairly easy part okay so why isn't the ln graph beneath y is equals to x okay uh, why would it be beneath the line y is equals to x why would it be beneath the line y equals to x sir vectors mein area nahi aata at maths mein nahi vectors mein area nahi aata wo maths mein aata hai theek hai okay so this is a four mark question and here you have what here you have the function g is defined by g of x is equals to x minus 4 the whole thing square so immediately when i'm looking at a quadratic function what i would like to do is i would like to quickly sort of make a rough sketch of it take so g of x is equals to x minus 4 the whole thing square so graph isn't in fourth quadrant that's because the reason why it's not in the fourth quadrant is because x is supposed to be greater than or equal to 0 only take okay that is why okay so plus 1 so the turning point is going to be 4 comma 1 take okay the turning point is going to be 4 comma 1 so yeah so let's quickly and quietly make a sketch of this 4 comma 1 that means this is what we're looking at here's 4 and let's say here's 1 okay this is what we're looking at okay now when the question says x is lesser than or equal to x is lesser than or equal to 4 that means we're only looking at the left hand side of the curve we're only looking at the left hand side of the curve theek okay. hai yeah the completed square form gives you the uh, minimum value directly if you're right which is why i didn't uh, use the I I don't use differentiation or anything at all. ठीक है? अच्छा अब मुझे ये बताओ since the question says that x is lesser than or equal to 4 x is what x is lesser than or equal to 4 what would be the range of g of x? Okay listen to my question carefully. I'm asking guys for the range of g of x. ठीक है? And why am I asking? Because we're going to need it in the next step. It's going to be greater than or equal to minus 1. g of x is greater than or equal to minus 1. ठीक है? Domain we can see lesser than or equal to 4. ठीक है दिस इज द डोमेन एंड द रेंज वी कैन वर्क आउट इट्स गोना बी ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू माइनस वन ठीक है अच्छा नाउ लेट्स फाइंड आउट द इनवर्स ठीक है वे यू गोना डू नाउ वी गोना फाइंड आउट द इनवर्स सो या सो इनवर्स के लिए विल से वाई इज इक्वल टू एक्स माइनस फोर द होल थिंग स्क्वायर प्लस वन ठीक है वेल इट्स गोना बी ऑल रियल वैल्यूज बट ऑल रियल वैल्यूज ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू सॉरी नॉट माइनस वन प्लस वन क्या जस्ट रियलाइज मेड एन एर देर सो गोना बी माइनस वन इट्स गोना बी प्लस वन ठीक है Yeah, sorry about that. Okay. Sir, the notes you sent on Facebook, can you send the link here? No, but uh, you you will find them on my Instagram. Okay, find them on my Instagram, or because I don't have the link with me right now. Yeah, you'll find them on my Instagram. Okay. Okay. Now let's make x the subject. Okay. How do I make x the subject? Y minus one is equals to x minus four the whole thing square. Let's write this nicely. X minus four the whole thing square is equals to y minus one. Let's take the square root on both sides. So if I take the square root on both sides, x minus four is equals to plus minus square root of y minus one. Now let's make x the subject. So x is equals to plus minus square root of y minus one plus four. Now we do the final step, which is g inverse of x is equals to plus and minus square root of x minus one plus four. Okay. Now we're going to decide. Now we're going to decide whether we're going. So in fact, let's first write down the domain and range. ठीक है. Let's first write down the domain and range, and then we'll decide whether we're going with the positive value or the negative value. Okay. What What is the domain going to be of the inverse function? Question for you guys. What is the domain going to be for the inverse function? It's 
thank you Mahal. happy to do it yeah the domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to 1 okay same as the range of uh, g of x and what about the range of f inverse of x what about the range of f inverse of x think about it think about it yes it's going to be lesser than or equal to 4 take it's going to be lesser than or equal to 4 okay root ke bahar ki sign aayega bilkul saad i think you've just joined okay so now we have to decide whether we're going to go with the plus sign or minus sign okay so i'd like an answer from you guys are we going with the plus sign or the minus sign and i also want a reasonable explanation Acha minus aega. Take Why? Why minus? You're right. Minus aega. Take But why is it going to be minus? Yes. So basically, minus aega because if you look at the range, if you look at the range, the range is it's lesser than or equal to 4. So the only way this function can be lesser than or equal to 4 is when you have a minus sign with this, with this square root expression. Okay? If suppose, let's say there was a plus sign, so that means there were chances of the range becoming greater than 4. So we have to honor the fact that the range is lesser than or equal to 4, which is why we will only have a minus sign outside. We can only have a minus sign outside. Okay? Achha. So yeah, there you go. This right here is your final answer. Okay. Minus four already. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you solve this? But if this is absolute, then I've done a whole stream on absolute. Uh, why, why don't you go check it out from there? And I think this, this question that you're asking is basically the one that we're supposed to solve using graphs, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not wrong. So if you write, yeah, of course, if you write plus and minus, you're going to lose one mark. Take it. Okay. So. Okay. So I'm going to do one more question. So this is a bit different question. Okay. It's, it's a good question. Okay. Let's see. Sir, can you please do a live stream on trigonometric identities? Okay, I haven't done a stream on trigonometric identities. I, have, I think I have a video on trigonometric identities. Let's see. I don't know why I can never mentally keep up during an advanced lecture, even in class at school. I would just lose track. Okay. Okay. Um, well, if you think you're not too interested in the subject, then, you know, I mean, just could be because of that. I mean, you know, it's an optional subject. If you're not too interested in it, then, you know, make a decision because A-level math is going to be the same as this. So, yeah. Okay. So, question number 15. Either you guys need to decide ke how exactly are we going to use these functions over here to make this. Okay. Which year this question is from? This is from October, November 2019, paper 12. October, November 2019, paper 12. Okay. So first one, you guys are saying f of g. Okay. Why is that? Because if I plug in f of g, so you're saying f g. So if I plug in g in place of f, we get square root of x plus 5. You're right. That's correct. Okay. What about the second one? Second one, you guys are saying g inverse okay Achha, i'll tell you how 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 it's going to be g inverse right so the reason why it's going to be inverse i mean the reason which will probably prompt us to think about inverse is because you have a plus here and you have a minus over here well how did this plus turn into minus the only way that this could have happened is when you take the five over to the other side when you do that you do that when you're finding out the inverse okay so that's why this can only be g inverse so yeah Achha, what about part three x square what about 3x square? Lost is f square. Chalo, theek hai. Theek hai. Lekin 3 to mujhe batao. Yes. Third is basically, third is basically f inverse. Okay. 
Now the reason why third is f inverse is because if you do square root of x is equals to y and if you try and work out x, so x is going to be y squared and then if you do the final step, f inverse of x is equals to x squared. Okay, so this is the reason I mean, this is the reason why just reason why x squared is basically f inverse. Okay, now fourth one you're saying g, what about the fourth one? Last one is f squared for sure f squared no it's not f squared g squared yeah the last one is g squared Tika. so the last one is g squared okay not bad not bad let's solve this now tell me h of x is equal to a plus b upon x squared Tika. y is minus 2 x is greater than or equal to minus 2 lesser than or equal to 2 not a suitable domain for h of x okay why is this not a suitable domain I will upload this file, uh, I'll, I'll attach a link to it in the description, you can get it from there. Yes, so because in between minus 2 to 2, we have x is equals to 0, where h of x becomes undefined. Yeah, that's correct. Achha, let's do this. Achha, by the way, this is not the inverse. Nahi hai. Hai? What is this? This is basically a differential. Hai? So, I'm sure you guys have worked this out. Ke kaise hoga. We'll be using simultaneous equations. So, h of 1 is equals to 4 means that we'll plug in 1 in place of x. Okay. So, a plus b over 1 squared. So, there's no need to write that. Okay. Is equals to 4. So, yeah, that's one equation. Now, what are we going to do with this? We're going to differentiate h of x. Take care. We're going to differentiate h of x, but before I differentiate it, I'll have to make it differentiation ready. Take care. That means I'll have to bring x squared in the numerator. So h squared of x a is a constant, so differential of which is going to be equal to zero. Okay, and then we're going to have minus two b x to the power minus two minus one. So that's minus three. So let's write this nicely before we do anything else. Minus two b upon x cube. Take care. Now according to the question, h in h of one is equals to sixteen. Okay, so that means if I plug in 1 minus 2b upon 1 cubed, which is as good as 1, take care. So minus 2b is equals to 16, which means b is equals to what? b is equals to minus 8. Take care. If b is equals to minus 8, okay, let's go back here. a minus 8 is equals to 4, that means a is equals to what? a is equals to 12. There you go, that's your answer. Let's go check it because. Knowing me, there are chances that I have a calculation error. Ki ho. Okay, b is equal to minus 8 and a is equal to 12. Okay, that's correct. Okay, so Pythagoras theorem? Uh, no, Pythagoras theorem. Where did you, how did you think of that? I hope you're kidding. Okay, anyway. So, everything else is sort of interconnected. Okay, everything else is sort of interconnected. So what would be a suitable domain? How will you find it? Okay, we don't have to find the suitable domain. Okay, we just need to watch out for the fact that when x is equals to 0, if what happens when you divide anything by 0? Okay, what happens when you take a number 5 and divide by 0? So for every exponential function, domain will be x will be 9. For exponential function, the domain will be all real values. Yes, it becomes undefined, exactly. So, which is why, see, you must have noticed, let me show you something. You must have noticed whenever we're given a f function, yeah, see, look at over here. Why is it that the question felt the need to tell us that x is not equal to 1 upon 2? Dividing anything by 0 is undefined, yes, okay. Why, why did the question say this over here? And you'll find this written with, whenever you see rational functions, you'll find this written. Iska domain jo hoga, bas ye hoga, x is not equal to 0. Okay. Yeah, so the reason why the question has told us to not plug in half in place of x is because when we do plug in half in place of x, it becomes the denominator becomes 0. And what happens when the denominator becomes 0 is because uh, what, what happens is the whole thing becomes undefined. Okay. range kya hogi, to iski range hume nikalne ko bola nahi hai. Okay. Or since hume iski range nikalne ko nahi bola wa, to iski range abhi hum determine kar bhi nahi sakte. Okay. Okay. 
okay so let's see let me find any other interesting question okay so i will encourage you guys to solve the other questions also okay so in part one how it becomes undefined but i think i just explained the whole thing that when if the denominator is zero anything divided by zero becomes undefined okay yes i will share this with you guys don't worry i will share this with you guys okay don't worry about that okay so there are some questions in fact all the questions that i haven't done in this stream i'd strongly encourage you guys to attempt them okay they're very useful and yeah okay quite useful okay let's do one more question then we'll do one more question okay sir can you please tell what to do with the turning point to get the domain and the range sir solve question 11 okay चलो लेट्स सॉल्व क्वेश्चन नंबर 11 ठीक है ठीक है फाइन दिस विल बी द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ओके ठीक है इन फैक्ट गुड थिंग वी डूइंग क्वेश्चन नंबर 11 बिकॉज़ इसका ये वाला पार्ट जरा थोड़ा सा ट्रिकी है ठीक है अच्छा सो इट सेज फाइंड एंड सिंपलीफाई एन एक्सप्रेशन फॉर f ऑफ g ऑफ x ओके सो f ऑफ g ऑफ x मींस दैट वी आर गोना प्लग इन g इन प्लेस ऑफ x इन f ठीक है सो 2 1 upon x squared minus 1 over 3 into 1 upon x ठीक है so what happens next is that we get 2 into 2 upon x square minus 1 okay, divided by 3 upon x. So, yeah. so that means now we're looking at 2 upon x square minus 1 into x upon 3. Okay. So what happens next is that we get 2x minus x upon 3x square. Okay. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's not let's not play with fire. Let's be good kids and find out the LCM. Okay. And then work it out. Okay. So let's find out the LCM of this. Okay. And we'll divide it by 3 upon x later. So yeah. So the LCM is x square. So we're looking at 2 minus x square into 3 into x upon 3 into x upon 3. So we can cross out the x and we can cross out the square from uh, x square so now we're looking at 2 minus x square upon 3x okay 2 minus x square upon 3x okay given that f inverse of x f inverse exists write down the range of f inverse okay you can you guys tell me what will be the range of f inverse domain of f that's correct that means it's going to be f inverse is greater than zero okay greater than zero that's it okay now this over here is a is quite a tricky question okay so i want you guys to pay close attention to it because we have to find of f we are find the inverse of f of x so first things first we're going to set it equal to y 2x square minus 1 upon 3x okay we're going to cross multiply so 3xy is equal to 2x square minus 1 okay now remember whenever you're finding the inverse we have to make the we have to make x the subject okay so let's shift everything over to the right hand side so now we have 2x square minus 3yx minus 1 is equals to 0 okay yes exactly so an important part over here is to realize that we will have to basically use the quadratic formula okay so quadratic formula hum pe kaise a is equals to 2 b is equals to minus 3y and c is equals to minus 1 okay sir please tell the reason why inverse exists it in the inverse exists because it's a one-to-one -one function okay that is why the inverse exists okay now let's use the quadratic formula so x is equals to minus b plus minus square root of b squared that means minus 3y whole squared minus 4 into 2 into minus 1 upon 2a so x is equals to 3y now in the question we have just the positive sign so we're also going to go with the positive sign plus 9y square plus 8 upon 4 now we do the final step 
which is f inverse of x is equals to 3x plus minus square root of 9x square plus 8 upon 4. Oh, sorry, like I said, we're not going to go with the plus minus. We're just going to go with plus. Okay. That's it. Uh, that's the final answer. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's about it. This, as I said, was the last question. Okay. Now, I will encourage you guys to solve the other questions. Okay, They will further strengthen your understanding of uh, functions. Okay, hopefully, inshallah. And tomorrow, inshallah, I'll either be streaming something to do with identities. Okay, something to do with identities. Or perhaps something to do with... What was the other thing you guys requested? What was the other thing? Or can request get up the There was identities, rate of change. Okay. PDF I'll attach as soon as the stream ends, I'll attach it with the description. You can get it from there. Integration. Okay. Um I've already done a stream on integration area under the curve. You're welcome, Halima. You're welcome. Series, I've done a stream on that. Pyramids volume? Come on. Pyramids volume? Really want me to stream that for admins? Hence evaluate. Okay, yeah. We, we could do one of those. Okay, we could we could do hence find type questions. Okay. Have I not done that already, by the way? It seems like I have done that already. Chalo, I'll, I'll probably narrow it down to two. Okay, I'll probably narrow it down to two. And then post on my Instagram, take care, and then you guys can reach out to me and let me know what it is that I have to do. Take care. So I'll stop here. Take care, everyone. Allah Hafiz. And please do like the stream if you haven't yet, and do subscribe also if you haven't done that yet. I appreciate that. Take care, everyone. Allah Hafiz.